Hey guys, Matthew, I have something really special for you guys today. This is going to be a much cheaper version uh, of the one-shot Uber build that I made last league. The build that was basically 20 divines that was capable of one-shotting Ubers. Uh, I was able to make that build significantly, significantly cheaper and also without the requirement of jewelry from Kalanda. Of course, we had to give something up for that. And what did we give up? Survivability. It's even less survivable than it used to be. Matter of fact, it's a ZHP build, uh, which essentially means anything that touches you will kill you. So I highly recommend if you even want to consider playing this build, go in standard, make the character, set it up before League starts and get good. Because the build is capable of doing it. It's been tested extensively. But you as a player may not be there uh, in, because it, it requires good timing, you know, pressing the buttons at the right time. And of course, it requires you to know the mechanics of the boss fights so that you don't get punished. Uh, but if you put in the time, I, I promise to you, this is one of the most rewarding type of, of games of gameplay that you can ever, ever do. It's the type of gameplay that on the second day of a league is going to net you 20 to 50 plus divines per hour without even doing any sort of carry services. Yes, it's absolutely bonkers, but you do need to get good. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and have a look, uh, a quick look at what the build looks like against Uber Maven on like a day two setup. Um, and then we're going to talk about the POB itself. As you can see, this is an Uber Maven. Um, ZHP build, you know, anything that touches you will kill you type of stuff. Uh, but of course, anything that you touch will also absolutely die. All right, so let's see what this looks like. We're going to be looking at roughly one minute for the, f the entirety of an Uber Maven on less than 10 divines. Um, and that's actually, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating. It's a lot less than 10 divines, uh, but I'm just saying 10 divines because, you know, prices can be a little overinflated, um, especially on hyper-focused builds like that because people know that the items are absolutely mandatory, uh, so they tend to flip them. But as you can see, the boss goes down instantly, which allows you to skip the memory game phases. Yo, shout out to my boy Shinitai with the mechanics there. Uh, and uh, that's that's pretty much Uber Maven, right? And he got kind of unlucky there that she did Cascade of Pain. If she doesn't do Cascade of Pain, she instantly dies and he's in no danger. The Cascade of Pain there was a little bit dangerous because, of course, anything that touches him will kill him. Uh, but as you can see, there you go. Uber Maven, done. Less than 10 divines. Okay, so how is this possible? Well, I came up with a lot of different cheesy mechanics that put together are absolutely insane. So we're going to start off by looking at the tree. It's a very basic tree. This is level 92. Uh, you could probably do this at level 90, but I highly recommend getting to 92 to have the entirety of the basic setup because this is essentially your template of this is where you want to start off. Of course, you can build into higher levels afterwards if you want to pay for like XP or stuff like that, like five-way carries, um, because you're not really going to get past level 92 with this build. Matter of fact, you're not going to get past level 92 in 1%. Uh, so yeah. All right, now let's look at the actual tree. So we're basically doing damage, 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 damage everywhere, right? So that's the entirety thing. We don't have any life. We don't have anything else like that. We do, however, need to get some ES uh, because we are running Eldritch Battery. So Eldritch Battery is going to require us to have them some energy shield. And also another reason why we need some ES is for Frost Shield. I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So that's why I get this melding wheel here. That's why I get uh, written in blood here with the energy shield mastery. These are mandatory. You really want to have around 500 energy shield. It's pretty easy to reach 500 energy shield because we're running all unique gear, uh, unique pieces. Uh, you'll basically need a little bit of ES on your amulet and your ring, and that should easily get you to around uh, 500. That's all you need. All right. In terms of uh, the rest of the tree, it's just damage across the board uh, and then pathing. All right. Now let's look at the skills themselves, and then we're going to look at the items because the items are the super interesting part. Uh, so we're going to have a Skitterbot's Arrogance set up with Vitality. This is going to allow us to run Righteous Fire, right? So the regen, and then, of course, Skitterbot's for some more damage. Um, and then Arrogance is what's going to allow us to go low life, which is going to proc our Pain Attunement for 30% more damage. So that's really good. Uh, then we have a Divine Blessing set up with Inspiration and Anger. That's also the reason why we need around 500 Energy Shield, because Divine Blessing is going to cost a lot of Energy Shield. Uh, but 500, again, is plenty. Now we have a bear trap set up with cluster traps. This is kind of fluff. And, and what I mean by that is that you're not really going to get the bear trap DPS to actually proc. Uh, most of the time, the boss is going to be dead before this actually goes off. But I still recommend using it 
uh, especially early on in the early stages when your DPS might not be super, super high. And then you have Frost Shield. Now, Frost Shield, you're not necessarily going to need, and I'll talk about that. You're going to have two different setups. And the, the which one you go for is going to be personal preference, but also based on the price and the availability of the items. Uh, then the auras, the main auras are Hatred and Zealotry. As you can see, 23% damage there, 24% damage. These things are insane. And then we have Righteous Fire for the 40% more damage as well. Then we have our actual Eye of Winter setup. So as you can see, just Eye of Winter, Blast Chain, Slur Prod, Charge, Mind Strap, and Mind Damage. And then a level 3, not a level 5, a level 3 in power. That is all that you need. You don't even need a level 4. Level 3 is all that you need because the body armor gives you plus 2, so it's going to make it a level 5. And that's it. That's as cheap as I was able to make it. Honestly, if someone is capable of taking this build and making it even cheaper and still staying with the same amount of damage, I would love to know what they were able to change because it is so incredibly cheap for the damage that it does. Oh, but yeah, level 3 in power and that's that. Okay, now let's go over the items because this is the important part. If you are lacking pretty much any of these pieces, the build will not function. Like, we've tested it extensively, thanks to Shinita and, and another couple of community members who did the testing for me. It's been tested extensively. We know that it works, but we also know that a single one of these missing pieces can completely mess up the, the damage numbers and make it so you won't be able to one-shot Uber Maven uh, which is the important part because the Eldritch bosses, even if though, even if you don't one shot them, it's not that big of a deal. Um, because as long as you know the mechanics, you're, you're still going to be fine. But Uber Maven, if you don't one shot her and she starts spawning ads on a build like this, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So you want to make sure that you have everything here. Of course, Annihilating Light, triple damage, absolutely broken item. Uh, it comes with a massive, massive downside, however, the reduced elemental resistance. And it's typically very hard to make up for this downside because you need to get a ton of resistance, purity of elements, stuff like that. What I decided to do is, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to have literally negative resistance. The only resistance I care about is fire resistance, and that's because I need to run Righteous Fire. So this is one of the first cheesy mechanics is to use Cowl of the Thermophile because this gives you fire resistance is 75. It's not higher. It's not lower. It's 75. This also, uh, because these are a blight item, Really cheap, by the way. No one ever uses this on anything except for lab running. Uh, so they're they're super cheap, super common. Um, it allows you to anoint it twice. So what we do is we anoint it with a power charge, and then we also anoint it with uh, counterweight, and these are going to give us a ton of damage. This helmet gives us a lot of damage. You can see, if I take this helmet off, uh, it's... Uh, let's see, how much damage is that? Yeah, it's like 12% damage from this helmet. So it's a lot, uh, especially for... What it really does, its main fo f its main goal is to cap our fire resistance. That's all we need. And this is because we want to run Righteous Fire for 40% more damage. If we don't have cap fire rest, we can't run Righteous Fire. It's literally impossible. Uh, unless you had a Mage Blood with like a Ruby Flask or whatever, but that's a different story. Um, so yeah, Thermophile. Next, Skin of Lords. Uh, this is the, there's basically two pieces of this build that can be a little bit expensive. Skin of Lords is the first piece. Uh, and you really want to have this exact setup there's nothing else that I, you would you would want to change or mess around with at all uh so you want to have these colors i would say do not change the support gems uh stick to these colors so that can be a little bit expensive then we have doter's tenure this is just 100 percent increased spell damage then we have relicish and patience this is the second piece of the build that can be a little bit expensive um and it's absolutely necessary now, the reason why these are so insane is because it gives you your minimum frenzy, endurance, and power charge are equal to your maximum while stationary. So this actually allows us to run a Militant Faith with Inner Conviction for another 15% more damage uh, without actually losing frenzy charges because our frenzy charges is also another like 20% more damage. So it's a lot of just multipliers over and over and over. Uh, so that's why it's really, really important that we have Relicish and Patience. If you don't have these, I promise you it won't work out. Next, we have an amulet. Just plus one cold is going to be fine. Plus one intelligence. I don't think that, that exists anymore, but whatever. Just a plus one amulet. Maybe a little bit of multi if you can get it. And then craft on mind throwing speed. And it's going to be important that you get some energy shield on this specific piece of gear to, to get to that 500 number that I talked about. Uh, so if you if you have to sacrifice the crit multi and just get a plus one with some uh, energy shield and craft mind throwing speed, that's going to do just fine early on. Um... You might not be able to one-shot the uber versions, but again, you can you can do the one-shot, you know, one-minute maven kills or one-minute eldritch bosses. 
actually Eldritch Watches take like 10 seconds. Uh, and then, you know, farm up some currency to be able to afford an amulet that looks like this. Again, this is just a plus one, so it's nothing specially there. Uh, Mark of the Shaper is our ring of choice. It's absolutely busted how much damage this thing gives us. As you can see, 10.8%. Uh, it's actually more than that. 12% damage from a Mark of the Shaper. It's a busted ring. Uh, now, you could also go Circle of Fear, uh, but that's later on. Once you get enough uh, reservation efficiency, you can do two Circle of Fear with, uh, with Herald of Ice. It's more damage, but it's also significantly more expensive. And Mark of the Shaper is just an easy item to get. Then we're going to have any opal ring uh, that's, or sorry, it doesn't have to be an opal ring, any ring that's elder. Now, the reason for that is because it's going to uh, allow us to run Mark of the Shaper and get the spell damage. And also, this is a good place to get attributes and a good place to get ES, right? So as you can see, this just has strength, dex, ES, and then crafted strength and dex. We are going to be lacking a lot of attributes because look at how many uniques we have on this build. It's basically uniques across the board. And the pathing is almost entirely just intelligence. So we do need dex and we do need strength. The ring is a good spot to get it. The amulet is also a good spot to get it. Now the belt. The belt is a super interesting uh, super interesting item. And you're going to have two different choices for the belt. And this is also one of these cheesy mechanics that I came up with. And I've never seen any build actually using this item. Which is surprising because it's really good. Uh, Hyperborus. It gives you increased, belt, uh, increased damage with hits and ailments against shield enemies. This is really good. But the main thing that we care about is your critical strike chance is lucky while focused. Now, the problem is this item may not be available or affordable, right? When I looked last league, there was only a handful of them, even in the middle of the league, when a lot of players were playing with the critical strike chance is lucky while focused. So I made sure that I came up with an alternative that would be just as much damage and basically would be the equivalent. And that is going to be a String of Servitude with Critical Strike Multiplier during any flask effect. However, if you want to run the String of Servitude with multi, your crit chance is going to be too low. You really want to have over 90% crit to be able to like have a really easy time one shot in the bosses. So we are going to need to go back and use Frost Shield. So essentially your choice is either Frost Shield with a String of Servitude, or if you don't want to use Frost Shield because it's a little bit annoying, you got to time it right. Uh, because you, you only get the crit after spending a certain amount of energy shield, right? The other alternative is to instead use Hyperborus. Now, Hyperborus, you're not going to have to use Frost Shield, but you will have to use Focus, right? So it's not like it's less buttons. You're still going to have to use Focus, and you're still going to have to time it right, because Focus has about a four-second damage window, while technically Frost Shield has an infinite window, as long as you're regening ES and and use or I, spending ES, the Frost Shield is going to stay there. So which one is basically up to you what you're going to use. I would probably use Hyperborus. Uh, but again, if they're not available or if they're not affordable, then I would just swap to the String of Servitude because these are very, very cheap. Like single stat crit multi during any flask effect is just, it's cheap as dirt. All right, then the flask setup is also important. We're going to use two, two flasks and we're going to basically use them twice. And what I mean by that is that we're going to alternate so, for example, on the first memory, or on the first brain phase of Maven, we're going to use the Diamond and the Dabbler Sulfur Flask. Because again, it doesn't matter how fast you kill Maven. What matters is that you one shot the brain itself, because that's what's going to tell. That's what's going to decide whether Maven goes through a memory game phase or not. So you're going to use the Diamond and the Sulfur Flask to see on one shot the boss. Now, because we have the gain no charges during Flask effect, and because we're not killing any ads or anything like that, after we use it. Once the diamond flask is going to have one more use, but the sulfur flask is going to have no more usage. So when the brain comes back for the second time, we're going to do it again. We're going to use another diamond flask and another sulfur flask to to basically one shot it again. And then the third phase, uh, we're basically going to use just the diamond because the sulfur flask are probably not going to have any charges. But it's really the two first phases of the brain which are the important one. The last one doesn't really matter because even if Maven goes into a memory game phase on the on the last actual phase of the fight she doesn't spawn any ads so it's still really easy to do and your your arena should be completely clean because again she doesn't do any of the bubbles she doesn't do anything like that she just dies way too fast all right next we are going to look at the jewels the jewels are very simple uh so we're gonna have two large clusters these are cheap as dirt they're one one um notable Eight passive cold, and it's just Sadus, so you can just alt spam for this and you're done. You're gonna use two of these. 
Now, the reason for that is because we are going to take advantage of all three of those. We're going to take advantage of the Chill, the Ignite, and the Shock. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's why we use these. These are really, really strong. Um, now, I believe if you look at the Calx on I Winter, you can see that we have a... We're going to be shocking because of the flat lightning damage from Mark of the Shaper. We're going to be chilling uh, because, obviously, I have Winter. Uh, and then we are going to be also uh, getting Anger, which is what's going to allow us to Ignite. So that's how we're going to be able to take advantage of all three of those, uh, which is a total of 60% elemental damage. And we're going to use two of that. And then the medium clusters are just freaking bolts and eye to eye for just basically projectile damage. Again, we're going to take advantage of both of those. We're going to take advantage of 35% from Shrieking Bolt, the 25% from Eye to Eye, and the 35% from projectile with hits against nearby enemies because our mines are going to be right on top of the enemy. So it's nearby, right? Uh, so that's why we're going to get, uh, we're going to take advantage of both of these for another, what is that? 95% increased projectiles uh, damage. As you can see, we have 849% increase and 798 total more damage. And that is why this build is absolutely cracked. But yeah, that's pretty much it. The rest of the jewels are basically going to be double multi. That's what you're looking for on your regular jewels. So crit multi with spell damage, global crit multi, crit multi with cold skills, um, and, uh, crit multi for spells. I don't know if I said that one twice, but yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be looking for. Double multi-jewels are typically a handful of chaos. You get as many of those as possible. And later on, once you can afford it, either go with triple multi or throw in some increased mine throwing speed. Now, that's pretty much it. We're not going to be running a Watcher's Eye because I was able to cut this off by using the Hyperborus uh, setup. And we also are going to want a Militant Faith with High Templar Dominus so that we can get the Inner Conviction. The other stuff on it doesn't really matter. You can get increased elemental damage per 10 devotion, which is nice, but we're really not getting much devotion at all. We're getting 50, so it's, it's just, bleh. don't worry about it, basically. The important part is just inner conviction for the 15% more damage. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is going to be, if you are basically not super consistent with this setup to uh, in terms of one-shotting the boss, it, it's probably because you're messing up the timings. And as you start pouring more currency into it, it's going to get easier and easier. So for example, once you get a level four in power, it's going to be easier than once you have a level three. Or, But one of the very cheap things that you can do that is going to give you a lot of damage is to get a um, a corruption on your gloves. Now these Dodri's Tenure are very, very cheap gloves. And the thing is, you can actually get some corruptions that are going to give you a ton of damage. So you can see there's two different corruptions that you, that I would recommend getting. The first one is a uh, Frenzy Charge. Frenzy Charge is a lot of damage. As you can see, 9% increased damage from just this little line over here. And because these gloves are so cheap, it should not be very hard to get. Uh, and then the other one is for crit, base crit instead, right? So if you're struggling with crit, that's another one that you can get. As you can see, it's not as much damage, uh, but that's because once you get to 100% crit chance, you can't go past that, right? Um, so that's why these are a little bit less damage, but the frenzy charge is what I would really go for because frenzy charges in this build are absolutely crazy. They give us a ton of damage uh, because of charge mines. Uh, so that's that's pretty much why frenzy charges are so good. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire uh, idea behind this build. The little cheesy mechanics that I came up with in order to be able to one shot Ubers on like day two level of gear. For those who want to play this build, again, make sure you go in standard, practice, get good at it, because it's not a very uh, user-friendly build whatsoever. However, the actual return on investment, if you are willing to get good with it, is going to be absolutely nuts. All right, that'll be Matthew signing out. Until the next one, peace.